Hello, as the Queen of Deverland, I welcome you to our friendly domain. Please take a seat, grab a glass of wine, enjoy the feast and the music. Everything in this peaceful, friendly and calm environment. Ah! What? Ah. <sighs> Again? Uh, okay, who was this time? Who stabbed my back? Can you wait for five minutes? I'm welcoming our new victim friends uh, and try to show them how to play Regine. Oh, that's a nice knife. I'll keep it. So, as we were saying, we'll show you how to play Regine. This is one of our pocket games designed by Jose Maria Yue and Dani Gomez with a cute art by Bea Tormo. Uh, this is a bet and bluffing game where players will use the abilities of the cards to build the best hand or make others believe they have it to uh, place bets in the different suits everything to win chips and be the first player to reach 31 players if we take a look to what's inside the box we will find the rules in different languages with everything explained examples and all that Okay, as you can see, a lot of languages, fantastic. And you have also a bunch of cards. I will show now. We have four suit cards, queens, jesters, pairs, and game. And then we have uh, all the, the, cards, the cards that will be involved in the game. 40 cards with eight jesters, four peasant, peasants, four assassins, for princesses, I uh, for courtesans, sorry. For heralds, for knights, for princesses, and eight queens. You have also uh, doubled value chips of one and three points, and five and ten. And finally, four uh, double down counters. So now that we know what uh, everything that is involved in the game, it's time to learn how to play Regime. The setup in this game is really simple. Just You just have to place the four suit cards in that order with the queens and jesters on the top row and the pairs in game in the lower one and leave all the chips and double down counters at one side. Choose now a dealer. That dealer must shuffle the cards and deal four cards to each player. Okay, with that, creating the face down bed deck with the remaining ones, and with that you can start playing Regine. A uh, game of Regine is played over several rounds until one or more players reach 31 points that will uh, put an end to the game. And during um, each round, um, the, the game will be divided into three different phases. A first phase called uh, Building Hand, where players will uh, exchange and play cards using their abilities, trying to build the best hand for the next phases. A second phase uh, called Wagers, where players will place their bets on the different suits in order. And a third phase called Resolution, where you will check the winner for each suit. If after those phases, no player has reached 31 points, you, can, you will start over. The dealer will be the next player to the left. Game will be played uh, going counterclockwise and uh, a new round will start. So, during the first uh, phase, you may, uh, the building uh, hand phase, you may have, uh, you may perform three actions one time each of those actions, but in the order that you prefer, okay? The actions are those. First of all, you can exchange cards or declare that no more changes allowed. Uh, so if you want to exchange cards, just choose the card from your hand that you don't want uh, or the number of cards that you don't want, discard them, creating a face down discard pile and draw as many cards as you have discard from the deck, okay? Fresh cards and they go to your hand. That was the first. Or you can declare that no more changes allowed. If you say that, uh, players cannot exchange cards that way until a player uh, plays a, a jester. That we will show now in a second how that works. The second action that you may perform during that uh, phase 
is to play a card. Okay, choose one of the cards of your hand and place it in front of you. If you place it face down, nothing happens. The card stays there. Nobody will know which card it is. Or you may uh, play it face up. And if you do it so, you must uh, execute the ability of the card. Okay, let's take a look uh, to the abilities of the cards. Okay, so the abilities are those. With the gesture, as we said before, players can exchange cards again. With peasants, just choose another player. That player must play one of the cards on their hand, face up, and execute the ability of the card. With an assassin, choose a card that is already uh, played by any player, and that player must uh, discard that card from the game and immediately draw a new one. With courtesans, just turn over a a uh, face down card played by any player and that player must execute the ability of the card. With heralds, you uh, take a look to the, um, to the first uh, card of the deck and if you want, you can exchange the herald for that card. If you do it, just uh, remove the herald, okay, place it in the discard pile and take the new card and play it uh, face up and obviously execute the ability of the card. If you don't want to exchange the herald for the, the card you just saw, just place the card you saw at the bottom of the deck. With the knight, uh, choose a player and that player must discard a random one card from their hand and draw a new one immediately. And with the princess, you can discard a card from your hand and draw a new one. Queens have no ability. So, as we were saying, uh, you may exchange card or declare that no changes allowed. You may uh, play a card and execute the ability of not depending on how you play that card. And the third action that you may perform is to pass. If you don't want to play cards or exchange cards or you, or you cannot, you can always pass. Uh, if you pass, that doesn't mean that you will lose that phase. When the game comes back to you, you can play your turn as normal. Just when all players have passed consecutively, that will put an end to that phase. Also, you can pass and declare that no more changes allowed because you haven't exchanged. So you can say, you know, I pass, but changes are not allowed. So again, like we said before, if a player plays a jester, players uh, will be able to exchange cards again. But if not, they cannot exchange cards that way. And that's the thing. Once all players have passed consecutively, the first phase will end. Now all players are forced to play all the cards they have on their hand, placing them face down, okay, let's imagine it looks like that, and those four cards will be the hand that the player will have for the next phase. The second phase of the round is the wager phase, okay, now players will alternate their turns, placing uh, bets on the different suit cards in order, so first players will place their bets on the queens, then on jesters, then on pairs, and finally on game. Let's take a look to those suit cards, okay? Uh, queens, they grant you one, uh, one point, and uh, the winner of that suit is the player with more queens in their hand. Uh, if there's a tie, the player with the higher card will be the winner, and if the tie persists, the, player, the, the dealer or the player closer to the dealer will be the winner of the suit. Jesters also grant you one point, and they are for the player with more jesters on their hand. If there's a tie, it works like with queens, but with the lowest card, okay? And if the tie persists, the dealer or the player closer to the dealer will win the jester suit. Pairs works a little bit different. It grants you one point if you win with a pair, or two points if it's win with a three of a kind, or two pairs. If, in that case, two pairs wins a three of a kind, and three of a kind uh, wins a, a regular pair. Also, if you have four equal cards, it counts as a double pair. And if there's a tie in some of those, uh, the player with the higher hand, uh, with the higher uh, card in their hand, will be the winner. And in case of the, if the tie uh, persists, the dealer or the closer to the dealer, that's always the same. And finally, uh, the game suit grants you two points if uh, it's completed with uh, exactly 31 points or one point if it's uh, in a value between 32 or 40 points, okay? Again, if there's a tie, the highest card will be the winner, and if the tie persists, the dealer or the closer to the dealer. 
So basically, when the when it's up to you, when it's your turn, you may do three things during that phase. First, you can uh, place a bet. Okay, let's say we we have to start with the queens, and if you think that you will win that hand, or you want to pretend that you're going to win, you just say, okay, uh, that's mine. Just take a value one chip, always value one, you cannot bet more than that, and place it in the side or corner closer to you in that suit. Okay, in that case, that's our side. Okay, second thing that you may do here is to pass. Okay, maybe you want to see uh, what other players will do, or you think that you don't have a good hand. Okay, you can say pass. Like uh, before, if you pass, that doesn't mean that you will lose that phase, okay? Just when the uh, game comes back to you, uh, you can bet now or, or pass again. Just when all players have passed consecutively, uh, then you, you, you won't be able to uh, place a bet on that card. And the third thing that you must do, that you can do here, is to uh, double down, okay? If you have uh, placed a bet uh, before, during that uh, phase and that in a previous turn in that suit you can say okay that's mine for sure so i double down just place the double down counter in the closer side or corner to you and it means that the, that the reward of the winner of that uh, suit will be uh, the regular uh, reward plus the double of the number of chips Place here, okay? Once a player places a double down chip, no new players can add their bets. So, uh, players who didn't bet for that suit, they cannot uh, uh, place bets again. And the remaining players who place the bet, let's imagine that that player here plays the bet and that one, can decide now if they want to leave their bets here and saying, okay, we will see. Maybe you think that you will win, but maybe I will win. And thanks to you, we will win the double. We will see that or they can retreat, okay? Let's say, okay, I don't want, that's all yours. If a player is the only one who placed a bet on a suit, okay, with a double down or without a double down, that player wins immediately that suit, okay? No, nobody plays that one. So you will win the highest reward of that suit. Let's imagine that we are the only ones that, are, that placed a bet here. So we will win two points and the chips that we bet, also one. So we will win here three points and we don't have to show our cards. Flip now the, the suit card to show that it has already been solved and that, that card win go, uh, won't go, sorry, to the third phase, the resolution phase. Same thing with uh, the double down. If you place the double down, you will win just the chip you place, not the double. So in that case, we will win two points that one is not double because we are the only one here. And that's it. You will do that process following counterclockwise, placing bets on a suit. Once all players have complete uh, a suit, we, you will move to the other, then the other end, then the final one. And once the four, su the four um, suits have been uh, solved with their uh, bets, it's time to go to the third phase to uh, see the final resolution for each suit. And in the third phase, it's time for uh, the, resol the final resolution of each suit. Um, here you have like two options. There's an option that in the previous phase, no player have placed a bet on a suit. It could happen that everyone has passed. Then players now, they all turn up the older cards and you compare the cards of all players with that one, okay? Then the player who accomplished the winning condition of that card will be the winner of that suit, receiving just the reward of the suit. If, like here, um, more than one player have placed a bet, you have to check the cards of all the players who placed a bet. So, in our example, those three players have placed a bet, not that one. So we have to compare the cards of those players, the players who, uh, who placed the bet in the suit. So it could happen that a player with uh, the, bet, the best hand won't uh, win the, the suit because he didn't place the bet. Uh, and that's it, at the end, 
if there are different bets here, you will win the reward uh, shown in the suit plus the number of chips uh, players there have bet and double, doubling the, the number of chips if there is a double down coin. So in that case, we'll win one, two, three, per two, six, and one, seven points. When, when you win points, just take uh, enough chips to simulate the points that you have. In that case, seven. At any moment, you can exchange uh, chips for higher uh, chips and, and have the, 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 the values that you have here, the points that you have accumulated that way. Um, finally, if uh, there are no players who have accomplished the conditions uh, in the pairs, if no player who plays the bet has a pair or no player or n a player has not reached 31 or, uh, or more than 31 points, uh, there's no winner for those suits. Just if a player was the only one who bet in those suits will win. Okay, and, and that's it. If no player have reached uh, at least 31 points, then it's time to start with a new round. You will choose a new dealer, the player to the left of the dealer, who will take all the cards, shuffle them again, create a deck, deal four cards to a new player and start a new round. And you will continue that way until one or more players reach 31 points. If more than one player has reached 31 points, the player with the highest uh, score will be the winner of the game. So at the end, if you manage to uh, be the winner, congratulations, you have succeeded in the, in the conspiracy and treasons on the court, and you manage to climb on the ladder, on the social ladder, and more important, you are the winner of Regine. We hope you enjoy the game, and remember, Keep playing. Bye.